gonna go over a few Cricut hacks and maybe explain some features that you might not be using. My name is Kelly and let's get clacking. So one of the first ones is to use keywords in your file names. When you upload your own files to Cricut Design Space to use in your projects, you can actually add keywords on the right hand side. Now this will greatly help you when you're searching for your projects, if, especially if your file names are a bit funny, and then you won't have to struggle with finding them in the future if you want to use them again. The next one is something that I probably mentioned a little bit too often, and that is to use Cricut Access. Cricut Access really saves my high knee on many, many days, and it is great because those days that I'm feeling a little lazy or I'm not feeling very creative at all, I can go on Cricut Access and quickly whip up a project because they've obviously got lots of pre-made projects that you can do, and you don't have to worry about designing anything or if you're short on time, that is a great time saver. Editing Kelly here, something that I did forget to mention about Cricut Access is that you can actually share your designs with the Cricut community, but conversely, you can also see other designs that other people have made on Cricut Access. So you can go to your canvas and actually open up the filter and scroll to the Cricut community. It's nice because then you get to see the kind of real humans that have made the designs and not like the super uber professionals that have made them. So they look, look a little bit more realistic and for me it's a little bit more like what my design is actually going to look like once I've finished making it which is pretty cute and you know it sets the expectations a little bit more realistically <laughs> which I like. And of course with a lot of these it also means that you can actually make those designs that people have shared. So you can actually click on it and then you can customize it or make a version of it. If they did use something in Cricut Access it'll actually tell you when you click on the design which is also pretty cool. So I just thought I'd share that little nugget of info. The next feature is to use the grouping function. Now the grouping function works really well for me when I'm busy designing a project. If I'm working with multiple elements that I don't necessarily want to cut in that specific position, then I'll use the grouping feature. Make sure that you do understand the difference between group and attach, and if you are not quite sure, I will link a video up in the top. This next one is something that I do all the time, and that is to use a square, the size of the cutting area on your mat, in order to optimize your mat space. Now it's a little bit of a pain that we have to do it manually, but at least we can save our project and only do it once and not have to redo it again if it's a project that you're going to be making again in the future. So what you do is you, you insert a box, you make it the size of your mat, so it's 29.2 centimeters, and then you can add in all of your other elements on top of that and orient them within the space perfectly. Make sure to attach them before you send it to the Make It panel, otherwise Cricut Design Space will just reorganize everything for you. Now, this is another feature that you may not know about, especially if you don't have an Apple device, as this feature is unfortunately only available on the iOS so that is the snap mat feature. And what this feature does is it allows you to very, very easily make use of all of your scraps. And essentially what this allows you to do is to position whatever it is that you want to cut onto the areas where you have the scraps on your mat. So it is really useful and I use it quite often. A little bit of a bonus tip that I wanted to add in about the snap mat feature that I completely forgot to mention was that if you're struggling to get everything level on the snap mat, Put it down on a table or something like that and have your mat on the floor. Or just put the mat on the floor because I find that it's a lot easier to make sure that everything's level when it's slightly lower down as opposed to holding my iPad or your iPhone or whatever the case may be that you're using from a higher distance because my arms get very shaky and I'm sure you guys all know how it goes. So if you're struggling to get everything perfectly level and the mat to correctly capture, either put it down on a table or put the mat actually on the floor itself. If you want a tutorial on how to do this or if you want to see more projects with the snap mat, leave a comment down below and let me know. If you want to create super cute vinyl layered designs like this one, then you can very easily make use of this with the contour feature. 
The contour feature allows you to hide certain elements of a picture and by duplicating the image and hiding some elements and leaving some others shown, you can then create your own layered design. If you want a full tutorial on how to do this, I will leave a link up in the top for you. If you want to draw something with your pens and you want to make sure that it's a little bit colored in or that the lines are a little bit thicker, what you can do is you can use the offset feature. You can use an internal offset and what this will do is it'll create additional lines for the pens to then color in. Again, if you want a full tutorial on how to do this, I will leave a link up in the top for you. Now coming off the back of working with pens, this is something that I find very, very useful as I really enjoy using my Cricut pens and I find I use them often. And that is to use the text style when it comes to choosing a font. You can use the filter on the fonts to filter out non-text styled fonts. This is particularly useful because it'll actually show you exactly what it's going to look like when you are using a pen. And you can very easily see exactly which font will look very nice and which ones you can use. This next trick is very similar to what I mentioned earlier about getting your mat space and that is to do the same with your print then cut. So with print then cut what it typically does is it tends to waste, I mean let's be real here, it tends to waste quite a bit of paper. So by making sure that you're completely optimizing the entire space that you're going to be using you can probably get a lot more stickers out of a single sheet of paper. Another feature that people probably don't use very often is the collections feature. Now you only get three collections if you don't have Cricut Access. If you do have Cricut Access you will be able to create more than three. I like to use this for different themed collections. So as an example I have one that is Christmas themed. I have one that is themed for animals. I have one that is themed for flowers. So if you tend to do a lot of design work in Cricut Design Space, you can then add that into a collection. And then when you're looking for something specific at a later date, you can then go to that specific collection and look through all of your designs. In Cricut Design Space, you can obviously upload your own images and kind of create your own, I hesitate to say SVGs, as that's not really what they are, but you can add your own images into Cricut Design Space. There are a few different things that you need to make sure that you keep in mind when you're actually uploading your own images. And that is to use the different features and things that Cricut Design Space has in it. Like knowing exactly what image type to select, whether you should select moderately complex or complex image. And once you have selected that, whether to know what you should do with the image after that, what erase features you need to add, what does color tolerance mean, what does reduce the colors mean. So if you want a more detailed tutorial on exactly how to do that, I will leave a link up in the top for a nice full length video on exactly what to do and how to get the perfect image upload. And here is a list of all of my Cricut Design Space tutorials if you want to check those out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to check out my next video and remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.